Okay, uh, good morning everyone. It's good to see you all here again. Welcome to this bi-monthly intellectual feast of Christian mind. Uh, it's amazing how we have journeyed together um, over the past 10 months. Um, we have come to this final session of the uh, Redeeming Technology Workshop Series. I hope you have been enjoying yourselves. Have you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Just wondering, how many of you have been with us for at least for at least three of the five sessions? Oh, actually, that's quite good. Very good. Okay, how many of you have been with us for four out of the five? Wow. Okay, how many of you have been with us for all the five sessions? Wow, okay, a round of applause for this. We should give you a prize or something. <laughs> okay, the prize is free lunch afterwards. Okay. <laughs> free lunch afterwards and free questions right in the Q&A session okay we have quite a lot of things lined up today so we will just uh, move on remember at the end of the last session you were given a piece of homework right you were encouraged to submit a proposal on any piece of research that would um, like redeem technology in one way or another right in your area of expertise and out of the responses we received uh, we would like to share with you in particular one uh, piece of work which we found particularly inspiring. Okay? Um, so we'll have about 10 to 15 minutes for Dr. Irene Fan to share her research idea with us. Okay, Dr. Irene Fan, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, and um, giving me the opportunity to stand in front of you to present my homework. I'm a little bit nervous in front of the experts and gurus. I'll try my best to uh, summarize my um, proposal in 10 minutes. Uh, why autonomous car? Um, it started with my uh, research and my work, um, helping to develop a MOOC course uh, in Industrial 4.0 um, last year. And uh, one of the main theme is about smart city, of which uh, autonomous car, I would say AV uh, in the subsequent um, speech. and. Uh, the AV um, area is the uh, one of the major theme. Um, of course, how can I turn here? Okay. All right. So of course, uh, people will say there's uh, pros and cons. Thank you. Pros and cons in um, uh, AV uh, type of work, and uh, people say that in uh, statistics, human make the most error in terms of um, the uh, car accidents uh, contribute to um, the major car accidents. Uh, therefore, uh, replacing human with um, autonomous um, engine that will be, uh, uh, or the vehicles that will improve the traffic safety. And uh, also efficiency, that will include both the time of the driver, the uh, traffic congestion overall in the city, as well as the uh, shared economy uh, type of uh, thinking that will save time and making uh, the city overall is more efficient. Um, and also, they, they claim to have a social equity because they will allow the uh, people um, like seniors or physical challenged people or uh, people who uh, usually cannot get into the car be able to uh, roam around themselves freely. And uh, lastly, it's about the greener environment by uh, saving in terms of less cars, third car, and uh, more efficient way of using cars. Now, of course, there are disadvantages. People will um, defend of that because they will replace the human drivers and making the job opportunity uh, decrease. There are privacy concern in terms of tracking the location of the car and security issue about hacking into the system. And also, that's what I want to talk about today is the um, ethical issue. Now, in uh, 2018, this year, March 18, there's an accident uh, happened in Arizona, USA that I'm not sure you've heard about it. Basically, a Uber, this uh, AV, driving along the, the road and hit a lady with a bicycle walking across the street. And uh, the inside camera captured both the outside view and the inside view, and it sees that the car was going along without trying to stop at all, uh, hitting the lady. And inside view, seeing that the driver actually have his, has his head down until the last minute he uh, look up and find that he cannot uh, do anything to uh, save the situation. There are recorded four uh, accidents, fatal accidents, uh, so far in the past uh, years when they test the uh, auto, uh, AV 
And uh, four of them inf involved in Tesla uh, autopilot, and uh, it caused the death of the driver. And this is the, the t uh, Arizona one, is the first one that involved a person outside the car. Now, what caught my attention is the, the news report. Even though the incident is still under investigation, and also uh, Uber has been keeping silent to themselves, but uh, there is news talking about the reason of the car accident is an intentional tune down of the software to avoid posi uh, false positives. What it means is the testing of the Uber or the AV been uh, seeing a lot of false objects causing the uh, control of the AV uh, breaking or turning side without uh, really uh, facing a real flat. So uh, that's why they suspect the system has been turned down. Also, they're saying about the removal of some sensors that caused the, um, the accident. So we still have to see what actually happened after the investigation. But this is about changing or tuning the software, causing problem. So uh, just a high level uh, view of how the system works. There are sensors around the car and inside the car engine um, collecting data um, knowing how the vehicle, the state of the vehicle, as well as the environment uh, outside, and uh, uh, including the road condition and so on. And all this data, data has been collected and processed before it input into uh, something called DDM, which is the decision-making mechanism, uh, referring to the brain of the car. And it will make decision to uh, tell the control system, which is uh, controlling the mechanism or the operation of the car. So if you look at it the other way, it's l like collecting of data, making it, massaging it into information, and telling the DDM, the brain, um, hoping that become useful knowledge, allowing it to make wise decision. However, is it truly wise? Is that wisdom coming out from AV? Um, Moral Machine is uh, an MIT set up website allowing uh, people to collaborate and looking at those scenarios and making judgment. So they will have two scenarios or two decisions uh, in each case. They have dozens of cases. And everybody can sign on to it and be able to contribute to the decision. And uh, I'm not going to, uh, because of time, I cannot go in further. Uh, de detail with that. But you'll see there are cases like uh, judgment of hitting five people on the right side or the left side, and you know more information about the, the object. Basically, there can be animals, uh, cats and dogs, pregnant women, uh, infants, or professionals. So they have all kind of information providing to the car, and the car needs to make a decision which way to go. And in the other case, it's a decision about um, hitting the block itself, the car itself killing the person in the car or killing the people on the road. So the question is, you deliberately uh, hitting somebody or you unavoidably hitting uh, certain objects or person. So the whole idea is uh, cloud sourcing of ideas and cloud sourcing of the opinions. But people will say that's more like a trolley problem that we have heard from for decades. But I see this as more than a trolley, ordinary trolley problem. It involves not only a personal judgment or ethical decision, but it's actually feeding into the machine to make either a rule de definition or rule decision or training the machine by machine learning. So it's uh, not only human ethics or personal ethics, but it's a collaborative way of telling what the machine will do. So there's a more question that I can think about. Uh, who is responsible in an AV accident? The driver? who passively sitting behind the wheel, or in some cases, they have different level of collaboration of the, the car and the uh, driver. So is it the driver, or is it the car manufacturer? In this case, Tesla or Uber that we have seen before. Um, the other question is, with full no knowledge of the environment and the different scenarios, is it a blessing or is it a curse? I know who I'm going to hit, and I have to make a deliberate decision whom I'm going to hit. Is that a, a blessing or is it a curse? Um, who can decide which choice is best? So those are the uh, questions that we have to answer. Now more than that, um, I refer back to um, a case or a, um, a study 
uh, happened in uh, 1950, 1950s. And um, a person, uh, a, a pilot actually and, uh, in the um, uh, Navy force, they, they actually in the force that they uh, test the 4,000 pilots in 140 dimensions, hoping to get an average uh, dimension so that they can design the, the cockpit to fit average person. So the study ends up telling us that nobody out of the 4,000 fit that dimension. So meaning this question um, asking is, is average or the majority in terms of the normal distribution actually is the best solution? So um, the quote in 2016 by Rose is saying that if you design a carpet to fit the average pilot, you actually design it to fit no one. The same logic applies if you design something for the average or the majority for the AV car. It actually designed to, for no one to fit all the profile of the decision-making dimensions. So how is the uh, decision-making mechanism for AV can be determined? What kind of machine learning you can learn from? How are we going to train it? And is there any difference between gender, religion, or value system? Can the car be programmed to fit whoever sit on the driver's seat according to his or her profile? So my proposal basically has two parts. The first part is knowing what's happening today. Because I'm new to this um, area, I, I have to know what is happening. So three parts of it. First of all, what is manufacturing doing today? Uh, what do they claim they are doing in their products? What kind of patterns they found in terms of the logics? And uh, any publication on the algorithm and methods? Secondly, what does the public think? Uh, what does the people, normal people think about and what kind of policy are, are doing right now? And how about uh, researchers in the ethics domain? And most important, is there any question saying anything in this area that I still have to investigate? I find uh, somebody called Dr. Patrick, uh, Professor Patrick Lin in USA has some ethic uh, area um, papers and publications, but I am yet to uh, look in more detail of that. And then the second part I propose is to um, develop decision-making scenarios similar to or a little bit more easy to collect data um, than the, uh, the more machine to collect input from different type of people and in particular knowing their background a little bit more and with that of course I still have to use some statistical, uh, statistical uh, investigation and see if there's any significant difference between different value systems okay is there actually any difference uh, but it's looking more than comparing the, the means. And um, finally, I'm hoping to develop a uh, maybe open source simulator if I can fit different type of uh, values into the system would the machine or the AV uh, behave differently. And that's similar to, uh, to what I, we talked about la uh, last week, uh, last time, we're talking about if we can teach the machine to learn or read the Bible will it behave differently. So that's the same line of thought. So um, I'm hoping that if there is such a research, we will have a descriptive understanding of the uh, current methods and uh, empirical evidence about different systems, value systems can cause the decision-making system um, behaving differently. And finally, a useful tool to further the investigation into machine ethics research. So that's all my talk and uh, any questions? Yes. Thank you.